Hello everyone. In this presentation, I will introduce you some preliminary results and challenges from the analysis of a sample of Chinese folk music. In the beginning, let me shortly introduce you the authors of this research. I'm Yukun Li, I'm a PhD student in Computer Science of Center of Digital Music in Queen Mary University of London. I'm in charge of the technology part of this research. And Zhao Xingyu and Wei Yue, they are musicologists in Shandong College of Arts in China. They are in charge of annotations. So the content can be split into three different parts. In the first one, I will briefly introduce you some Chinese tra traditional opera background knowledge. And the second part is about our research questions and the data. And the third part is about issues in note transcription. So the first part, Chinese traditional opera. We will focus on Bangz, which is a style of Chinese traditional opera. Speaking of Chinese traditional opera, I think the first thing got in your mind is Jingju opera, which is quite interesting and quite famous around the world. Jingju opera is just the style of Chinese traditional opera. So what is Bangz opera? What's the relationship between Bangz and the Chinese traditional opera and Jingju opera? Okay, to answer this question, we have to go to look at this picture. So Chinese traditional opera basically can be categorized into four main vocal styles. And under each vocal style, there are lots of regional genres. Vocal style is called Chang in Chinese. Let's go to more details about different vocal style with a map. The first vocal style is Bang Chang, which is the vocal style we are interested in this research. You can see it's distributed in the Middle East of China. The second style is Kun Chang, which is distributed in the East of China. The third one is Pi Huang Chang. You can see it's very popular in the South of China, and it's also popular in Beijing, the capital of China. So Jingju or Peking Opera is just the one regional genre of Pi Huang Chang in Beijing. And the fourth one is Yi Yang Chang, which is also popular in south of China. So now I will introduce you more deeply about the vocal style we are interested in this research, Bangz style. So you should be very confused about what does Bangz mean. Okay. Bangs, also called Chinese wood block, is a small slit drum made from a single piece of wood. Let me show you this video. So there are some wood blocks, there are bangs. And you can see different shape of bangs has different sound, different timbre. The origin of Bangz style opera is quite interesting. So Bangz style was developed 400 years ago. Musicians from Shanxi province composed operas using the percussion instrument Bangz and other Chinese traditional string instruments. These operas were sung with a special vocal style. So people call this style of opera as Bangz. You can see it was developed originally from Shanxi province in the middle of China. And then with some people do the commercial activities, it was distributed to the province around Shanxi. To understand Bangz opera better, we have to listen one piece of music. Before we listening, I have to introduce you the most important character of Bang's opera, which is tempo. So you can see this piece of music 
can be split it into four sections based on the tempo. Each section has different tempo. The first one is rubato, the second one is slow, the third one is moderate, and the fourth one is fast. Different tempo play different role in the storytelling. You can see the first one is the introduction of the narrative. And with the tempo going faster and faster, the singer can express emotion more and more intense. Let's have a listening. That's the section A. So go to section B, which is slow tempo. Just the start telling the story. And the section C. We start to express some emotion. And the last section. Now you should be very curious about the teaching style of Bond's opera. Let's watch a video. You can see the teaching style is in oral tradition. And it's also very subjective because they don't have any textbook to give some standard of the performance. Everything the student can learn from the teacher is just to mimic the teacher's performance. So the content can be split into three different parts. In the first one, I will briefly introduce you some Chinese tra traditional opera background knowledge. And the second part is about our research questions and the data. And the third part is about issues in note transcription. Great. After getting some background knowledge, we can move to research questions and data. You can see, we still have to think about the tempo, which is the most important character of Bond's opera. And our question basically generally is about what's the difference in the feature of scene performance or music content between different sections. And how tempo or the position of the section affects scene performance and music content. So you should be very confused what's the feature of singing performance and music content. In next slide, we will list some features. There are four features we are interested in. The first two is about musical content, and the last two is about the singing performance. We will introduce you the details of each feature is one by one. The first one, tonality. Tonality is very important when you study music. So we are interested in this research, how the tonality vary with section. The second feature is about interval between two sections. We're interested about this because we are interested about how different sections connect together in terms of the melody. You can see the notes are represented into the blue box. So here we are interested in the interval between the last note of the section A and the first note of the section B. The third feature is page jump which is very important in Bond's vocal style. You can always hear the big page jump in the Bond's opera. And in this plot, the first subplot is pitch. You can see there is a big pitch jump over one octave. And the second subplot is loudness. And the third is tempo. <clears throat> you can see with the big pitch jump, the loudness and the tempo increase rapidly. So this 
pitch jump is from a very intense section with a faster tempo. We're interested in other sections with slow tempo. How's the pitch jump? What's the shape of the pitch jump? And how the loudness and the tempo change with the big pitch jump? The fourth feature we're interested in is vibrato. We're interested in vibrato because vibrato rate can be changed and so that the tempo can be changed because the tempo is very important in Bond's opera. In this picture, as you can see, on the left hand side, the vibrato rate gradually increases, while on the right hand side, the vibrato rate keeps the same. So we hypothesize that here the singer just mimic the wall drum to increase the vibrato rate, to increase the tempo, and try to connect two sections with different tempo. I'll introduce you how we collect our data and recordings. So we got our recordings from Chinese Record Group Corporation, which is one of the biggest company to collect Chinese folk music recordings. And we got the Bonds recordings, which is from the Middle East of China. And in this research, we just focus on the Hebei province recordings, which is indicated by yellow color. getting recordings, we did the segmentation based on tempo by Zhao Xing. And in total, there are 10 minutes and 35 seconds recordings. So we got 11 pieces of segments. And you can see we give uh, statistics about duration distribution of each tempo type, the moderate type of tempo account to the most duration. The recordings we got are all mixed audios. To clearly analyze singing, we have to extract the vocal parts from the mixed audios. But we have the folk music. Most of neural networks for source separation don't work well on folk music because they are trained from the popular music. So we have to look at the audio. We found that there are two channels of the audio we got. One channel is mixed audio and the other is just accompaniment. So we just get the difference between the, the two different channels. And then we got vocal, but the vocal are not very clean. So the third step, we just apply a source separation model developed by Bad Dance. Then we got the very clean vocals. So we can listen to the mixed audio and the vocals we got to let you see the performance of our method to do soul separation. That's the original vocal. That's the original bit recording. And that's the vocals. So the content can be split to three different parts. In the first one, I will briefly introduce you some Chinese tra traditional opera background knowledge. And the second part is about our research questions and the data. And the third part is about issues in note transcription. So now we are going to our final part of this presentation, issues in note annotation. We are going to analyze the issues from two aspects. One is from the perception challenges, and the other is the technique issues. Now we are going to introduce the issues of different stages when we do the annotation. There are three stages. The first one is F0 correction. We got the F0 from Tony and we have to do some corrections. And the second is note segmentation. We segment the page trees into notes. And the third stage is no page correction. We adjust the page of each note. Finally, I will give you a very brief time use analysis. In the first stage, F0 correction, the perceptual challenge here is the quick pitch jump. 
You can see in this picture there are two pitch jumps. We can have a listen. <laughs> As a human being, we can perceive the pitch jump, but we can't accurately to detect the frequency change as machine can do. So here you can see the Tony software didn't give us ideal results. For the first pitch jump, it gave us pitches, but not very continuous. For the second one, it didn't give us any pitch trees. But the powerful thing we can rely on is that we can select the range of time and frequency and force it to estimate the pitch again. Let's see the results. So the yellow curve is the new results Tony Software gave us. You can see in the first case, there is no big change. In the second case, we got some pitch trees, but it's not very continuous. So in this case, we can't rely on Tony Software. In the second stage note segmentation, we have to decide when a note starts. Normally we think that the note starts with the voiced part, like a vowel or voiced consonant. So when we listen to voiceless consonants, it's hard for us to decide which point the voiceless consonant starts. Let's have a listen. You can see here, there is a large gap between two notes, and uh, here it is, voiceless consonant. As an annotator, we have to listen to several times to roughly decide when the voiceless consonant stop. In the second stage, note segmentation, another perception challenge is pitch glide. You can see here in this picture, there is a pitch glide. And some people can perceive the glide as an individual note, but some people can't perceive. Let's have a listen. Yeah, it's very short and hard to perceive for me. Suffering this perception uncertainty and complexity, we feel doing annotations on the interface is very tough sometimes. When I look at Zhao Xing's annotation, I found this very short note. Zhao Xing said she made it by mistake when she wants to adjust the onside of a note very accurately, but she didn't notice this mistake at the time. Using the mouse to do annotation is annoying and tiring to her sometimes. More natural interaction like voice controlling this kind of thing is what we hope. In the third stage note page correction, we also have some perception challenges. As you can see here, we adjust the pitch of note, and we want to listen if we change the note page correctly. So we play the audio and the notes together. It sounds very good, isn't it? But if you just play the notes, you feel get confused. The melody sounds very strange and not sounds like the original audio. There are some technical issues in this stage. The first one is that we have no chance to hear the page change. You can see when we move the page of the note, so we can move the mouse and the system can show the frequency change. But the frequency is just a number. We can't hear the page. The number doesn't make any sense to musicians. So here, the solution from Zhao Xing is that firstly, listen the note and mimic the pitch of the note, sing to the tuner. And then we can go to the frequency of the note from the tuner. Finally, we do the adjustment. We can just input the frequency number to the system. And then the pitch is adjusted. We got correct pitch. 
The second technical issue in this stage is notes display. So when we need to adjust the page of notes, we need to get the notes from the Tony and in import the notes to the Sonic Verilizer. But sometimes you can see the notes just out of the range of the window. It's very annoying and we didn't know how to do how to fix it. So I will just give you a very brief time use analysis finally. To answer the question, why have we spent so much time on transcription? I think there are four main factors to influence the time we spent. The first one is how much variations in the singing. So if the singing is very simple, straightforward, there must be very few notes. But Chinese opera, there are a lot of variations. So we have to transcribe a lot of notes. And the second thing is about how familiar to the music. Zhao Xing used less time than we because Zhao Xing are very familiar to the Chinese opera and Bond music. So familiarity is very important to do the transcription. And the third part is about how familiar to use the software. Both of Zhao Xing and Wei, they report me they are getting quicker and quicker when they do transcribe using Tony software and the Sonic Realizer because they got more and more experience to use this, these softwares. And the final thing is about work style. So if your personality of working is has, easy to get hesitation and over processing, so the progression should be very slow. On the other hand, if you very easily to get concentrated and tireless, the work should be very efficient because when you get disturbed and get back to your work again, it takes much more time than before. So I just interviewed Zhao Xing and Wei roughly to get a statistics of time spent on different stages. You can see the no segmentation take most of the time and F0 correction just take very tiny bit of the time. So the content can be split into three different parts. In the first one, I will briefly introduce you some Chinese tra traditional opera background knowledge. And the second part is about our research questions and the data. And the third part is about issues in note transcription. Great, that's all of this presentation. Finally, I just gave a summary. So firstly, I introduce you some background knowledge. Congratulations, you have got a better knowledge on Chinese traditional opera than 90% of Chinese people. And secondly, we introduce you some questions about how tempo affect tonality and vocal performance. Finally, we introduce you some perception challenges and technique issues in note annotation. Thanks everyone.